And here are some practice problems. As usual, for the practice problems, I suggest trying these on your own first. And then if you can't solve them, uh, look up the solutions or watch the videos to see my solution here. But um, this one's pretty straightforward. Find A, that's the length of this side right up here, and round your answer to three digits. Okay, well here's side A, and here's another side that we know, and here's an angle. And if we look at this angle, which we're given is 27.1 degrees, then we realize the side we're looking for is the opposite of that angle. It's the side opposite from that angle, and this is the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent clues us in that we can use the tangent function. The tangent of an angle is always the length of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Applying that concept to this triangle looks like this. The tangent of 27.1 degrees is equal to the opposite side, A, over the adjacent side, 12.3. And then we just rearranged that to solve for A. A is 12.3 times the tangent of 27.1 degrees. And that's done on the calculator, and that comes out to 6.29. Okay, the next one, we're told to find B to the nearest meter, and this is side B, and this length here is 65, and that's given in meters, 65 meters, and there's 61 degrees. Again, the tangent comes in useful, the tangent ratio. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so in this case, what side is opposite the 61 degree angle? Opposite the 61 degree angle is this, the 65 meters. So we can say the tangent of 61 degrees is 65 meters over the adjacent side. And you should be able to see that if that's our angle, 61 degrees there, B is the adjacent side. So tangent of 61 degrees is 65 meters over B. So rearrange that algebraically, and you should be able to do that in your head. If not, work through the steps, but you should be able to see that B is going to be 65 meters over the tangent of 61 degrees. And again, you do that on the calculator. And it comes out to 36 meters. And again, if you don't see how to get from here to here, you need to. To do that, I would multiply both sides by B, and then those would cancel out. And then dividing both sides by the tangent of 61 okay, would give you that. 36 meters is your answer. Okay, here we're told to find alpha. That's the little Greek letter alpha. And again, we always, or not always, but we commonly use Greek letters to indicate angle measures. So in this case, we're told to find angle alpha, and here it is. And look what we're given. We're given this side, 24 centimeters, and this side, 39 centimeters. And you should see that the 24 centimeter side is the side opposite angle alpha and the 39 centimeter side is the side adjacent. So I can say that the tangent of alpha is equal to 24 centimeters over 39 centimeters. And you don't even have to write the centimeters there. They are going to cancel out. So it's just 24 over 39. So if the, if the tangent of alpha is this, then alpha has to be the inverse tangent of this. So you can say alpha is the inverse tangent of 24 over 39. And instead of computing this number in advance, I just put it into the calculator like that. Alpha is inverse tangent of 24 over 39. And that comes out to 31.61 degrees to two decimal places. Now let me show you one other move here. Um, if we know that the tangent of alpha is equal to this, here's another way to think about it. I could say, let me just go back to that step for just a moment. Tangent of alpha is 24 over 39. What I can do next, if you're having trouble getting from here to here, and sometimes that's a little bit of a mental step, try thinking of it this way. Here's an equation. We can do whatever we want to do to the equation as long as we do the same thing to each side. So what I'm going to do is do the inverse tangent of each side. 
And so the left side then looks like this. The inverse tangent of tangent of alpha. And the right side looks like inverse tangent of that, 24 over 39. Okay, see what I just did? I took this equation, and here's the inverse tangent of the left side and the inverse tangent of the right side. And you should see now that the inverse tangent of the tangent of alpha is just alpha. So the left side here simplifies to alpha, and the right side is this, the inverse tangent of 24 over 39, which is just what we had right there, inverse tangent of 24 over 39. And then on your calculator, of course, you'd get the same answer. But if you have trouble seeing this step from here to here, sometimes thinking of it as taking the inverse tangent of each side is a helpful way to use what you already know about algebra to solve this problem, or a problem like it. And here's another. A pile of sand is in the shape of a cone 12 feet high. So this is sand, and um, the pile covers a circular area on a circular area of the ground that is 30 feet across. So this area here is not 30. We're told that it's 30 feet across. That means the distance across there, that distance is 30 feet. Well, that means that this distance here is going to be half of that, 15 feet. And we're told to find the angle of repose. So the angle that we're looking for, this angle right down here, we'll call that theta. And I know that the tangent of theta has to be the opposite over the adjacent. So in this case, the tangent of theta comes out to be 12 feet over 15 feet. And I'm not even going to write the feet because if, if I do, you can see they'll just mathematically cancel out. So if you just want to cancel them in your mind and write tangent of theta is 12 over 15, that's fine. As long as those are the same units, which they typically would be in the real world. Okay, tangent of theta is 12 over 15, so theta has to be the inverse tangent of 12 over 15. And the inverse tangent of 12 over 15 comes out to be 38.7 degrees. So that's your angle of repose.